Hello everyone, it's me Dr. Muhammad Shweb and in this lecture we will learn about column chromatography. The contents are, we will study the introduction, principle, procedure, uh, what are the factors affecting the separation in column chromatography, its application, advantages and limitations. Briefly, what is column chromatography? In this type of chromatography, substances to be separated are introduced onto the top of the column and the column is packed with an adsorbent which is stationary phase and these substances are passed through the column at different rates by the use of mobile phase. The separation depends upon the affinity or attraction of each substance in a mixture. We are talking about the mixture which is to be separated for mobile and stationary phase. That is, different components in that mixture have different affinity or attraction for mobile phase and stationary phase. That is, we can say that through differential intermolecular forces I mean to say that the intermolecular forces between the substances or the components to be separated have different affinity have different attraction have different magnitude of attraction of intermolecular forces with both these phases We are talking about the conventional column chromatography. We are not talking about the latest techniques of gas chromatography or HPLC, which are also the latest techniques of column chromatography. We are talking about primitive column chromatography, which is a solid liquid technique. Stationary phase is solid and mobile phase is liquid. We were just talking about that there are different types of column chromatography. Our main concern is about the liquid chromatography. On the basis of mobile phase, column chromatography is divided into two types, which are liquid and gas chromatography. We are not talking about gas chromatography here. And on the basis of mechanism of separation, there are further types, adsorption, partition, ion exchange, and gel permeation chromatography. But here, we are talking about liquid and adsorption chromatography. The principle, stationary phase is packed into a glass or metal column. Then the mixture of analytes, the mixture to be separated is applied and the mobile phase is passed through the column. Mobile phase is either pumped through by using a pumping system or by using gas pressure. The stationary phase is directly packed or uh, it can be coated onto some particles and packed or it can be coated as a thin film on the wall of the column. Again, uh, the last two types are for the latest techniques which are highly automatic and uh, costly techniques. And when the eluent or mobile phase flows through the column, analytes are separated on the basis of their distribution coefficient and the components, the components emerge individually from the column. The component which have more affinity with the mobile phase will elute first from the column and the components 
which have more affinity with the stationary phase will leave later on from the column here is the diagrammatical representation here it is a column it is back with the stationary phase and then the sample is loaded when the mobile phase is added as shown in the pink color the sample mixer is separated into two colors two components are separated with the passage of time the components are more separated or we can see the, that these are clearly separated this green one component has weaker interaction with the stationary phase so it will elude first and the second one which have stronger interaction with the stationary phase will elute after the first one the eluted molecules or eluted solution is collected in different test tubes or beakers or collecting vessels what are the instrumentation and the components first one is the adsorbent or stationary phase there are different varieties of variety of adsorbents can be used as a stationary phase which depends upon the mixture to be separated for example silica gel calcium carbonate cellulose alumina magnesium oxide zinc oxide etc and similarly the mobile phase also depends upon the mixture to be separated it plays an important role in the column chromatography some of the mobile phases are cyclohexane benzene etc based on the strength of adsorbents they are classified into three groups weak adsorbents such as sucrose insulin tox starch and there are some intermediate adsorbents such as calcium carbonate calcium phosphate magnesia slack lime etc and there are some strong adsorbent which are uh, alumina and charcoal etc what are the criteria of selection of adsorbents here are some general uh, characteristics of the adsorbent or any substance which is to be used in the chromatography the adsorbent must not react with the column or the mixture to be separated it should not catalyze the decomposition of any substance it must be insoluble in the solvent to be used it must be preferably colorless and its properties should not change uh, throughout the experimentation process and at last it must be in expensive easily available safe and environment friendly nearly the same characteristics are the prerequisite are required for the mobile phase choice of solvent or mobile phase here are different examples the choice of solvent or mobile phase is determined by the polarity and the solubility relationship if we have to separate a polar mixture then we will use polar solvents because the solubility principle states that like dissolves like so if we will use non polar solvents it will not separate the polar components next is column column dimensions are very important for effective separation generally the diameter to length ratio of the column used in the column chromatography is 1 to 10 to 1 to 100 
in liquid chromatography which we are talking about 25 to 50 centimeter long and 1 to 4 centimeter of internal diameter columns are used usually these are made up of glass but sometimes as the steel columns can also be used some other components can also be used which are a mobile phase delivery system the system are a reservoir which ensures the constant rate of flow of mobile phase or solvent into the column and the injector system this can be a capillary or a syringe which is used to deliver sample sample are our mixture which is introduced to the top of the column and the next one is detection the eluted substances or fractions are detected and then uh, the fraction collector different fractions are collected dif in different tubes are the collecting vessels steps in column first one is the preparation of column to avoid the blocking of stopper a glass wool, a cotton wool or an asbestos pad is placed at the bottom of the column before adding the stationary phase in it. It also helps to avoid the loss of the stationary phase. There are two types of packing. One is dry packing or dry filling. In this process, adsorbent is poured as a fine dry powder in the column and the column is tapped with a rubber tubing so that no air is trapped in between the powder layers and then the solvent is allowed to run through this dry packing so that the equilibrium is reached. But here is the problem that it is not uniform. So to avoid that problem, wet packing or wet filling is used. In this process, slurry of adsorbent with mobile phase is prepared and poured into the column. It is an ideal technique for the packing because it gives more homogeneous packing and before using the column it should be washed properly and dried and it should be free from impurities and uniformly filled the next is the introduction of a sample a solid sample can also be applied but it is preferable to dissolve the sample in small quantity of mobile phase and it is introduced as shown here at the top of the stationary phase before introducing the sample here some sand is kept so that the sample or a mobile phase do not disturb this stationary phase then there are development techniques or elution techniques the individual components are separated out from the column there are two techniques first one is the isocratic elution technique in this technique, same solvent composition or solvent of same polarity is used throughout the process of separation. For example, use of chloroform alone. 
and in the gradient illusion solvents of gradually high polarity or high illusion strength are used during the, this process initially non polar substances are the solvents such as benzene is used then the chloroform and then ethyl acetate etc here is a diagram which shows uh, that the different solvents can be mixed and injected to the column Here is another diagram. Here is the eraser wire which is placed on the top of the column. Here it is a label diagram. Here it is a stop cock. Then the cotton or a wool is placed here so that this stop cock is not stuck. Then it is, uh, it is filled with the silica gel or any adsorbent. Then the sand is placed here. Then a razor wire is placed on the top of the column. Here is another diagram. In the start, these three components are very close to each other. With the passage of time, the separation takes place. The component A is eluted first and then the B followed by the C. Then the detection of components. Uh, there is no problem uh, to detect that uh, colored substances as these can be simply visualized. But for the colorless compound, small fraction of the element are collected in a sequence in different test tubes and then the composition of each fraction is analyzed by TLC. The tubes are the fractions which give the same RF values or the same points in TLC are collected in one beaker or the reservoir or the vessel, collecting vessel. Here are some of the factors which affects the efficiency of separation. Remember that greater the flow of the mobile phase lesser is the efficiency of the separation so the dimensions of the column are very important for example if the length of the column is is greater then the solvent will take a lot of time in the column and the separation will be better one Similarly, if the particle size is very small, then it, the solvent will take a lot of time to elute from the stationary phase or the column, so the separation will be better. And similarly, the nature of the solvent, it depends upon the mixture component, then the temperature and the pressure. If the pressure is high, the solvent will flow more easily and the separation will not be better applications of the separation purification isolation and there are some clinical applications the column chromatography is mainly used for the separation of mixture of compounds and removal of impurities and the isolation of active substituents from the natural products and the isolation of metabolites from biological fluids, the estimation of drugs in formulation or any crude aspects. Advantages, any type of mixture can be separated through column chromatography, any quantity of the mixture can be separated, there are uh, a wider choice of the mobile phase and in the preparative type the sample can be separated and reused and in some process automation is possible. In the limitations, uh, that it is very time consuming method and the more amounts of solvent are required as we know that the solvents are generally expensive and for automation uh, it is a relatively costly technique. So we have to do it manually which is very time consuming and that's all about column chromatography. Thank you.